You know, it's amazing to me, all the fishing myths that you hear. Boy, I've heard my share of them over the years <laughs> and actually believed a bunch of them. It just ain't so. You know, the late Al Hauser, former director of the Oklahoma Fisheries Research Lab, couldn't have put it any better when he said, the problem isn't that anglers are ignorant. It's that they know so many things that just ain't so. Well, <laughs> I couldn't agree more. And over the years, I've heard, like I said, my share of them. In fact, at different times, I've come to realize that I even subscribe to some of them myself. So, with that said, let me share with you some of the more popular ones that I've learned that were actually myths or misconceptions as we fish along the next few hours. Okay? Tell you what, let's head out on the lake. There we go. Come on, man. Oh. Hey, pull, man. Here we go. You through? All right. Stay off on me. Oh, you just jump around here. Come here. Oh. On that little bitty spin of bait. Oh, you can float that thing over that grass so easy. Look at that little pudge, chunky number. Okay, boy. What are you thinking? You looking at that water, ain't you? See ya. Okay, here's one, a line myth. Now, many fishermen believe that line stretch is bad news, thinking it affects hook setting power and control during the fight. Truth is, there's a lot of good news to stretch in monofilament line, especially if you're a light line angler. Line manufacturers actually build stretch into their product and know exactly how each brand will perform under tension. No doubt, monofilament that offers some stretch stands up better to the shock of close by hook sets and hard pulling fish up close to your rod tip. How about this misconception? Many anglers don't believe that bass can grow to giant proportion quickly. Well, my good friends Don Keller and Barry Smith, owners of American Sport Fish near Montgomery, Alabama, who have been stocking and evaluating bass for years, have data and pictures of bass growing to giant proportions in just a short period of time. Example, like a 10 pound, seven ounce whopper that was four years old, and a 13 pound, four ounce biggie that was only five and a half years old. There he is. Look at him come right off in that deeper water. And I mean, he's smoking it. Wow. That's a... Whoa, whoa, look at here. Fish didn't even know where he was. Boy, he was moving. Whoo! I had this little old bitty reel just getting it. All right, come on. It's my time. <laughs> I didn't even know if I had him on there for a minute. Easy does it. Come on around here. Come on around. Open it over now. Stay off for me. Now consider this one. Is the color red visible or invisible underwater? Now that's what a fella asked me not long ago. Another angler told me that a fishing line manufacturer told him that red monofilament disappears because the color red is the first filtered out by water. And a hook manufacturer said red was a great color for attracting fish and triggering strikes which tells me red is not only visible, 
but very visible underwater. <laughs> Who in the world do I believe? Now, not to sound contradictive, both fellows are correct. It's like comparing apples to oranges. Light passes through monofilament because it's translucent. Think about it like this. With fluorocarbon, you can see it above the surface. Baits and hooks, however, do not let light pass. They refract it, which causes red to hold its color to certain depths, depending on water clarity. Now, here's just one myth about barometric pressure and how it affects fish. Lots of folks believe that when a front is approaching and the pressure is falling, fish move up shallow to maintain pressure and to feed. Well, it's true, they become more active, but move up in the water column to maintain pressure? That's not true. Just like when fishermen say, when a high pressure system moves in, fish go deeper to maintain their internal pressure. Nope, that's incorrect too. Look at the size of this. Whoa, that's a good one. Nice fish right here. Hold them. <laughs> oh, big old fish. Pretty baby. Come here. Got to be easy with this eight pound line. Oh boy, look at here on that little bitty bait, that little bitty bait, what it caught. Woo! Look at the size of that big chunk. Isn't that nice? Yes. Yes siree. Get that out of the way. Admire that pretty baby. Mm, mm, mm. You are pretty. Isn't that nice? All right, sweetie. Time to say bye. See you next time. Wind currents do not push bait fish like shad to windward shorelines. These little guys are strong enough to swim against most currents, which are normally very weak and fairly shallow. Phytoplankton floats on or near the surface and is pushed by the currents to the downward shores. When bait fish congregate there, it's simply because the shad, which are filter feeders, are there because that's where the plankton they feed on has been pushed by the wind. Okay, here's another good one. A lot of fishermen actually believe bass quit feeding when their world turns dark. That's a myth too. Regardless of how muddy a body of water is, fish don't quit feeding. They simply adjust to the conditions. They got to eat to exist. They can see better than you might think, simply because their eyes receive five times more light than a human's eyes. In other words, a bass's eye is five times more sensitive than that of a human's eye, which allows them to see at much lower light levels and at greater distances. Researchers say that fish can see more than 40 feet in relatively clear water. Wearing a diving mask, a person can see 10 to 12 feet in similar conditions. In stained water, where we can see two to four feet, tests show that bass can see approximately 14 to 16 feet. In muddy water, where a human's vision might be limited to just six inches or so, bass can see three to five feet. In muddy conditions, they do move extremely shallow and become very object-oriented. Bass are primarily sight feeders, and there's more light penetration in shallow water. When fishing these conditions, it's important to fish around any shallow cover, regardless of size. It's smart to always make several casts to each piece of cover, creating a path with your lure. What this does, it gives the bass ample time to locate your offering. In fact, bass in a lake that stays muddy most of the time often have much keener senses than fish living in clear water. And like I said earlier, they still have to eat to survive. I gotcha. You know, we started out this morning fishing down the shoreline, catching a fish here, catching a fish there, but they were just scattered. And all of a sudden, we stumbled up on this unique spot right here. 
it's where two long tapering points run out a great distance toward each other, dropping off into deeper water. Now, look at this piece of art. As you can see from this illustration, the points are basically shallow for some distance, then dropping off very close together. But what adds icing to the cake about this spot, it's covered with vegetation and it has two grass line point drops very close together. After we located where the cut between the two points was, we positioned our boat where we could fish both points. Let me show you what that looks like on the graph. I'm going to hit this trackback feature on my DSI. All right, here's what we're fishing on top of. This is vegetation right here. You can see the strands of grass coming up to the surface. This is about five feet deep, five to six feet deep. It's dropping off into about 15 feet, tapering on out to about 12, and then dropping off to about 16. Both these points are doing that. Now consider this. Most anglers believe the main reason bass seek shady areas is because low light hides them from the forage they feed on. Nope, that's incorrect too. A bass is too perfect a predator to have to worry about hiding to catch its prey. The reason they seek shade is that they can see better when looking from dark areas into well lit areas. Example, turn all the lights on in your house at midnight tonight and go outside and look back in the house. You can see everything going on inside. But tomorrow at noon, go outside and do the same thing. It's gonna be a lot more difficult to see what's going on inside. It works the same for fish in their environment. Got another horse. Oh, I knew he's a good one. Pull that little pole, pull that little pole, go easy on my light line. Okay. Where are you going? In closing, let me say, this week's show, there's simply no way to cover all the myths and misconceptions about our favorite sport. But in the weeks to come, we'll be casting out some more because I've got a tackle box full of them, some of which I find amazing myself. So keep in touch. We'll catch you next time. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.